Maximal force can be expressed across a range of conditions, influenced by the external load and the time available to express force. As a result, several distinct and specific strength qualities exist. To provide a re-examination and to help inform us of the different forms of strength expression, the article, published in the Strength and Conditioning Journal, titled Strength Classification and Diagnosis, not all strength is created equal, by Lachlan James and colleagues, provides an evidence-based practical framework that reduces the many strength and speed strength metrics into five distinct qualities, which are maximal isometric strength, explosive strength, heavy maximal dynamic strength, fast maximal dynamic strength, and reactive strength. This Venn diagram show even though each strength quality has a degree of overlap with the others, they are distinct enough to be considered unique. This is because each strength quality contains a different combination of external load and time constraint characteristics. For example, fast maximal dynamic strength and reactive strength both involve low external load. However, Reactive strength involves faster movements. Whereas, on the other end of the spectrum, despite both isometric and explosive strength involving high loads, explosive strength takes place over shorter time periods. And for heavy maximal dynamic strength, it involves a high external load under a slow time constraint. This presentation brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of the article in terms of what the five different strength qualities actually are, how they can be assessed, what metrics to use, and how each strength quality can be trained, and concluding with some general recommendations. The first strength quality that we're going to explore is maximal isometric strength. This is the greatest amount of force applied to an immovable object, regardless of the rate or ability to sustain the effort. Maximal isometric strength is typically assessed using an isometric squat or isometric mid-thigh pull, whereby maximal force is applied to an immovable bar for 2-5 to five seconds, while either using a force platform or strain gauge to quantify force production. The cue to produce maximal force is typically hard and fast. However, a gradual rise to peak force over several seconds has also been used, mainly for the isometric squat. This is to help reduce the likelihood of an injury from a sudden and maximal loading from the bar being placed across the shoulders. However, it is unclear how the maximal force output differs between a fast and slow cue. Therefore, it is recommended the use of cues are kept consistent. When the isometric position, for example isometric squat or mid-thigh pull, is replicated dynamically under maximal loads, for example a one repetition maximum back squat, or power clean. In non-competitive weightlifters, the commonality ranges between 14 to 50 percent. Whereas in competitive weightlifters, heavy training lifts and their isometric mid-thigh pull peak force tends to have a higher commonality, ranging between 69 to 86 percent. In these exceptional cases, maximal isometric and heavy dynamic strength can be considered a very similar quality. However, Despite being capable of detecting training-induced changes in performance, maximal isometric strength may not respond to training in the same way as heavy maximal dynamic strength. As a result, maximal isometric strength can be considered an independent form of strength expression in almost all cases. Maximal isometric strength tests have low injury risk are non-fatiguing and don't take a lot of time for individual or small groups. However, because specialised equipment and instrumentation are required 
it can be challenging to test large squads in a certain time frame. As maximal strength measured by the isometric mid-thigh pull, an isometric squat represents similar strength qualities. Deciding upon which one to use can be based on athlete preference and training experience, size and transportability of the platform and the familiarisation time needed. In terms of how to train maximal isometric strength, heavy strength training, emphasising a concentric start and end portion range of the motion is recommended. Maximal isometric tasks can also be used and obviously have the greatest transfer to maximal isometric strength. However, they have relatively limited transfer to other strength qualities. Moving on to the second strength quality, explosive strength. In research settings, this is typically referred to as the rate of force development or fast force production. It is determined by the force produced within the first 0.03 to 0.15 seconds during an isometric mid-thigh pull or isometric squat. When testing explosive strength, the cue is to pull or push as hard and as fast as possible. To properly assess explosive strength, the time frame must be brief enough to sufficiently distinguish it from maximal isometric strength. This is because at 0.250 seconds, the commonality between explosive strength and maximal isometric strength is 76%, indicating that they are testing a similar muscular performance quality. Whereas at 0.150 seconds, explosive strength appears to become isolated from maximal isometric strength, as indicated by a commonality of approximately 50%. Therefore, when testing explosive strength, it is recommended to use a measure that occurs no later than 0.15 seconds from the onset of effort. In terms of how to train explosive strength, weightlifting derivatives are recommended as a primary method. And ballistic and plyometrics with minimal counter movement can also be used. Moving on to the third strength quality, heavy maximal dynamic strength. This is the force expressed against heavy loads, typically involving both an eccentric and a concentric phase. It is often assessed by a one to five repetition maximum in a primary lift, like a squat or deadlift. However, because there is a near linear perfect relationship between relative external load and barbell mean velocity, advances in technology, for example, force platforms and linear position transducers have permitted objective outcome measures such as vertical velocity and peak vertical force to be measured that represent dynamic strength under heavy loads. Therefore, heavy maximal dynamic strength can also be assessed by the repetition velocity of a heavy but submaximal load, for example, ranging between 80 to 90% of 1RM of a primary lift. A very low commonality exists between heavy maximal dynamic strength and explosive strength, particularly at early time points. For example, at 0.050 seconds, there is a 2% commonality. At 0.100 seconds, there is a commonality ranging between 10 and 40%. And at 0.150 seconds, there is a commonality ranging between 20 to 45%. The higher end ranges are found in competitive weightlifters. Therefore, heavy maximal dynamic strength is distinct from explosive strength, except in competitive weightlifters. Although minimal equipment is needed for a repetition maximum test, 
the time taken to perform these tests and the requirement to achieve failure can limit their feasibility. However, if using submaximal loads to represent a heavy maximal dynamic strength, because the proximity to failure is relatively low, they can be performed more frequently and easily integrated into training. In terms of training, heavy strength training is recommended as the primary method, while weightlifting derivatives can also be used as a secondary method. Moving on to the fourth strength quality, fast maximal dynamic strength. This is the force produced maximally against no or little external load in movements above 0 0.30 seconds. Common assessments include the counter movement jump or squat jump. In its simplest form, a measure of jump height can be obtained with only a chalk on the wall or a jump and reach device, which can be an acceptable measure of fast maximal dynamic strength. However, performing a counter movement jump or squat jump using force platforms, accelerometers or linear position transducers provide greater insight into an individual's high velocity maximal dynamic strength. However, there are a number of things to consider with regards to which metrics to track. Fortunately, because most of the variation in counter movement jump test performance can be explained with two to three metrics, it is recommended to select one variable from each of the following factors. Within factor one, select one of the following jump height, vertical velocity at takeoff, peak vertical velocity, and relative peak power. And then select from one of the following in factor two, time to take off, time to peak force, time to peak velocity, and time to peak power. And for factor three, supplementing these metrics with counter movement depth and the ratio of jump height to movement time has also been recommended to better understand what actually occurred in the jump. The choice of what variable to measure within each factor can be determined by what is most reliable, interpretable and relevant. To help decide when to switch between heavy strength and high strength velocity training, fast maximal dynamic strength may also be compared relative to maximal isometric strength known as the Dynamic Strength Index. In terms of the commonality to each of the other strength qualities, this ranges from 20 to 40%, and variation can occur based on the population and their training status. In terms of training, plyometrics, adopting slow stretch shortening cycle, is recommended as the primary method while heavy strength training and weightlifting derivatives can also be used as a secondary method. And moving on to the fifth and final strength quality, reactive strength. This is the ability to produce force in a fast stretch shortening cycle action, i.e. less than 0 0.25 seconds. Reactive strength seems to be uniquely independent of the other strength qualities, sharing a commonality of approximately 10% with maximal isometric strength, 20% with explosive strength, 30% with heavy maximal dynamic strength, and 35% with fast maximal dynamic strength. Reactive strength can be assessed by performing a drop jump or rebound jump on a contact mat or force plate, with the cue to minimize contact time and maximize jump height. By dividing the jump height by the contact time, the reactive strength index can be determined. However, it should be noted, the drop jump test requires extensive familiarization and feedback after each trial is needed to ensure contact time is less than zero 0.25 seconds. In terms of training, 
plyometrics adopting a fast stretch shortening cycle is recommended as the primary method while plyometrics adopting a slow stretch shortening cycle and heavy strength training can also be used as a secondary method. And that concludes the summary of the five distinct strength qualities. To help determine what strength qualities to measure and train, we need to first conduct a thorough needs analysis, which involves identifying the key performance indicators of the sport. The performance indicators themselves must be empirically linked to competition outcomes. Once key performance indicators have been identified, metrics with the strongest associations to performance outcomes, such as tackling, striking and many others, depending on the sport, should be prioritised during strength assessment. Establishing an athlete's maximal heavy dynamic strength level and training history form an important part of the process. This is because those who are stronger, i.e. have a one repetition maximum back squat of two times their body mass, will display superior adaptations to high velocity training, i.e. ballistic and explosive training, i.e. weightlifting derivatives. Whereas those who are weaker or with low level training experience will improve across a broad range of strength qualities when exposed to heavy strength training. Consequently, as one becomes stronger, more specific and targeted training is recommended. Following an assessment of the athlete's current strength capabilities, strengths and weaknesses can be determined by comparing test results to squad averages or norms from the same group of athletes. In doing so, a strength profile can be developed to inform training interventions, which should be periodized. It is recommended to consider the timeline of events, opportunities for concentrated loading, logical sequencing, and how strength qualities can be progressed over the long term. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you check out the full article. The link is in the description as it is a top read. Thanks folks for listening. See you next time.